click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this video we will understand about the interference and the system capacity of the mobile communication systems. Meaning, due to interference we will find out how the capacity of the system fluctuates. First, let us understand what are the sources of interference. The very first source of interference may be a mobile that is used in a same cell. The second source of interference may be the mobile which is used in the neighboring cell. Other source of interference may be that a base station other than ours is using the same frequency set that we are using. Other sources of interference may be that there is a non-cellular system which is adding the frequencies or which is adding the noises to our system. That is, it is leaking the energy into the cellular frequency band that is used for mobile communication system. So what are the effects of these interference that occur? The effects could be either crosstalk say we are using certain set of frequencies for transmitting some other person is also using the same set of frequency and is in the same cell so there are high chances that crosstalk may occur and we are able to listen to the conversations of other person there may be missed call or there may be a call drop there may be blocking of a call because of channel unavailability the two major type of interferences are co-channel interference and adjacent channel interference. Co-channel interference occurs because two cells are using same set of frequencies but are not geographically apart and the systems are radiating into each other. The adjacent channel interference means that I am using a set of frequencies and there is another cell which is using the nearby set of frequencies means the adjacent frequencies to my cell hence the high chances that if not filtered properly the frequencies may interfere the other system this is known as adjacent channel interference we will now move on to the co-channel interference the cells that are using the same set of frequencies are called as co-channels. The parameter Q is called the co-channel reuse ratio. This parameter is given by D upon R which is also equal to root of 3 into N. The smaller value of Q indicates that the capacity is very high. Now how that is possible? Say if the value of Q is very smaller which eventually means the value of n is also smaller. Because the value of n, that is the number of cells in a cluster is small, every cell will be given larger number of the channels that are available. For example, if the value of n in the cluster is very large, means every individual cell will get lesser number of channels, hence less the capacity. In this case, if the value of q is less, the value of n is also less which means every cell gets a higher portion of the channel which increases the capacity of the system. In the other case, say if the value of q is very large. In the other case, assume that the value of q is very large. If the value of q is very large, then eventually the value of n is also very large which indicates the number of cells in a cluster is very large. Hence, the co-channel cells in two clusters will be very far apart because of many of the cells in a cluster. Because the cells are far apart, then the co-channel interference is minimum as possible. Means the transmission and the reception quality of a phone in a cell is very nice. By increasing the ratio of D by R, what we are actually doing is, we are increasing the distance between the co-channel cells. D stands for distance between the co-channel cells. And R is the radius of individual cell. By increasing this D by R, we are reducing the radius size and we are increasing the distance between the co-channel cells, which eventually 
means that there are two cells of smaller radius and they are far apart from each other means a co-channel interference between these cells is minimum or negligible or actually there is no co-channel interference between them. Thus in this case the interference is reduced because the cells are apart from each other or they are isolated from each other. Now we move on to adjacent channel interference. Adjacent channel interference occurs because of channels that are adjacent to the desired frequency signals. For example, the desired frequency that we are transmitting is 10 kilohertz. Then there is an interference from a signal that is adjacent to this frequency, say 11 kilohertz. This occurs because the filters that are used in my receiver are not properly functioning. They allow the pass band along with which they also allow the nearby frequencies to enter the signal. This adjacent channel interference can be minimized by assigning channels properly. This adjacent channel interference can be reduced by carefully filtering of the signals. That is, the filters that have been used at the receiver should be very strict in passing the signal frequencies. These adjacent channel interference can be minimized by carefully filtering the signals. That is, the receivers that are used should have filters with a very strict band frequencies in such a way that it does not allow the nearby frequencies to enter the signal. Another method of reducing the adjacent channel interference is by proper frequency allocation. Meaning, in a single cell, not a continuous band of frequencies should be given. There should be frequencies well distributed amongst entire cells that is, alternate frequencies or frequencies with certain gaps should be allocated for channels. Also, frequencies in the neighboring base station should be different totally from the frequencies that have been used in our base station. In such a way, by carefully filtering the signals, not allowing the nearby frequencies to enter, and by proper channel assignment that is not providing a continuous set of frequencies in a single cell so that hence the adjacent channel interference is reduced by proper filtering of the signals at the receiver and by properly allocating the frequencies in the cells and the nearby cells. It should be kept in mind that not continuous band of frequencies are allocated in a single cell also, in the neighboring cell, different set of frequencies from our cell should be given. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.